Happy anniversary, AI Theater Troop! Ha <laughs> ha! Happy anniversary! Happy anniversary! Happy anniversary! Happy anniversary, AI Theater Troop! Happy anniversary, Theater Troop! Happy anniversary! Keep the art in the theater alive! Happy anniversary, AI Theater Troop! I just wanted to say, uh, happy one year anniversary to the Theater Troop! Hey, happy anniversary, Theater Troop! Hey, everybody! Happy anniversary! Happy anniversary, AI Theater Troop. I've been there from the beginning, and I hope to see you through to the end. Happy anniversary, AI Theater Troop. Happy anniversary, Theater Troop. Happy anniversary, Theater Troop. Happy anniversary, Theater Troop. Happy anniversary to the AI Theater Troop. Happy one year anniversary, Theater Troop. I said I'd never do this again, but I guess I'll do it one more time. Happy anniversary, Theater Troop. Happy anniversary, Theater Troop. <laughs> Happy anniversary, Theater Troop. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary! Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary, everyone. Happy anniversary, Theater Troop. Happy anniversary, Theater Troop. See you next year. Woo! Happy anniversary, Theater Troop! Happy anniversary! Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the one year anniversary of the AI Theater Troop better known as Weekend of One Axe Four. Ain't you glad you paid a dollar for this? Brought to you by Chick-fil-A and the Cincinnati SPCA. So what is a 10 minute play, you ask? Well, nowadays it's a legitimate form of theater designed to get the story moving quickly, showcasing an actor's true talents in multiple roles with less scenery to get in the way. It's like channel surfing for theater with a new play every 10 minutes or so. Tonight, in the tradition of SNL or SCTV, we present our Summer Spectacular. In the spirit of Independence Day, summer barbecues, road trips, and the 4th of July cookouts. Some general reminders of the evening. Photography is encouraged, but flash photography is not. That being said, please do not use it as it distracts our actors worse than the fireworks. Something shiny. As a courtesy to our actors, also please turn off your cell phones and switch them all to silent. If you get a text or a phone call during the show, please be courteous and take the message outside of the lobby. The concession stand is once again open for your convenience, so please make sure to stop by and support the troop. There are also DVDs available of prior performances, as well as this performance's wish list. So make sure you check out our specials throughout the night if you're thirsty or want something tasty. So buckle up, patriots. This one could get long. All proceeds go to support the betterment of the troop and the Cincinnati SPCA. And as always, we hope you enjoy Weekend of One Axe 4, the Summer Spectacular. Thank you for coming out the Weekend of One Axe 4. This is, I can't believe it's our fourth one. Oh my God, dear Jesus, it is. It's four. It's our one year anniversary of uh, our community theater troupe here at the Art Institute. And we are really glad to have everybody out here in such a wonderful turnout too. It's a packed house again and it will get packed as the night goes on. We want to try to keep the seats filled up toward the front as much as possible. I know people want to sit in the back of the bus kind of thing where it's dark and secluded, but it clogs the entryway. So if you ever see empty seats up front, it's just like the Oscars. We would really appreciate it if you could come up and fill those seats. All right? Uh, a couple things I want to talk about tonight before we start so everyone understands what's happening. Um, one, we have a few disclaimers. Uh, the Community Theater Troupe is, of course, a college uh, <coughs> theater troupe. That being said, they like to push boundaries. <laughs> That's dramatic pause. Did you see the laughs? <laughs> That's, they like to push boundaries. So there are three plays specifically that I want to make sure that there is a disclaimer given to the people in the room if you have children. Okay? Those three plays are The People Upstairs, Mask of the Red Death, and That Guy. Those three plays, I don't know what in order they are, but... If when those plays come up, if you have children, you may want to take the children to the concession stand. Okay? 
Uh, speaking of which, at the concession stand, there are all kinds of snacks and goodies. Please support the troop. Please support us by uh, taking a look at the DVD that we have. There are DVDs available of prior past performances from Weekend at 1X at the Christmas show, uh, the first show, and things of that nature. We'd love to have you take a look at them. They are very funny. Um, and we don't have them on the net yet for that specific reason. Um, and one last thing. You are what makes the actors on stage survive. Your laughter. If you want to laugh, please don't hold the laugh back. They need to hear it. It's like being paid to be up here. Right? Right? It's like being paid for them to be up here. They want to hear your laughs. So can we practice a couple of cheers right now, please? That's, that's very, very, very lame. Please, one more time, one more time. this. We want to hear it. We thrive on it, okay? And one last thing. Tonight we're sponsored, we are sponsoring the SPCA, the local SPCA out on Conray Road. Uh, I am a proud adoptive parent, father of my dog, Angela Lansbury, that's on the program. That is her real name. <laughs> and next week we're adopting Carol Burnett. <laughs> so, uh, please donate with cans of dog food. If you have dog food you don't want or you just want to bring it in as long as it hasn't expired, we would really like to have it. With the SPA, SBCA sponsoring tonight's event, they gave us some t-shirts that if I could have my uh, people come out that are not there, that is wonderful. We will do it. We want to make sure that everybody has these shirts. Okay? The SBCA is giving out these shirts. Please take them, wear them in pride. If you have two, please pass it on to someone else. Try to hit the back of the audience if you can. It is very important that dogs and cats need love too. I go out to the shelter all the time to volunteer. Uh, I'm a big animal rights activist, and I really want to see uh, more people take advantage of that. So please, uh, please wear those shirts with pride. And if there's nothing worse than adopting a pet and not being able to take care of it, not thinking it through. So if that happens to you, think first before you adopt, okay? Thank you very much. Welcome to Weekend of 1X4. And don't forget the applause meter. Superhero Barbecue is all about a bunch of superheroes getting together to celebrate the 4th of July. It's kind of a sequel to a play that Tommy Beckendorf and I had written um, last Christmas uh, to the Legion of Doom Christmas Party, where all the bad guys gathered together to have a Christmas party. Pretty much take pop culture from the last 20 years. Think of like all the great iconic actioners you can think of. Take Bruce Willis and Samuel Jackson out, and you have the Hall of Justice Barbecue for America. There you go, that's it. So, we came up with the superhero barbecue, or you know, the 4th of July cookout, where all the superheroes of the world have the day off. It's just to get together and blow off a little steam, relax a little bit, you know, and try just to have their own day. And there's always those kind of family functions where somebody says the wrong thing, at a barbecue or a party or something and then the whole night starts to unravel. Just regular drama. Just happens like with friends. It's like any play. Yeah. The, the, the one guy gets drunk and tells the other one there's always drama at some point. Yeah. James Bond is trying to basically win a bet or just win an argument with uh, Captain Kirk and who, who had slept with more women. There's a big argument whether or not Kirk is actually gay or not, which, of course, I don't believe he's gay. How I look at it is it's chaotic. You're trying to fit 30 heroes in here or so, 
and they're all trying to get to this barbecue and it just does not turn out the way you want it to. And just trying to keep up and trying to get people from the play itself um, and just like, hey, let's rehearse since I can't make it to this play. I've been to one read through yeah. and uh, there was five people there. <laughs> and I think the cast is like 19 or something like that. <laughs> so that, that should tell you how the rehearsal's going. We had, a, we had a couple, I was working both times when Tommy got a hold of me. And he says, hey, you know, we're, we're having rehearsal today at this, this time. And I'm like, I'm on my way to work. Um, not gonna be there. <laughs> and it makes it difficult because people get mad at people, but it's not their fault. They have to work or they have class and stuff like that. So you kind of just have to be free any day of the week that you can and get your homework done that night. It's rough. <laughs> yeah. Don't tell, come on, it's I rough. got yelled at because I didn't have my homework <laughs> done and I had a skin rehearsal. <laughs> Tommy gave me hell for it. Oh, it was so much fun, you guys. You have no idea. There's nothing better than putting this together. Yeah. Did he really? Yes. Oh, I was man. like, I have homework. I've been sick. I need to do this. And he's like, you're skipping rehearsal. I was like, I didn't even know there was a rehearsal. <laughs> And it, it gets really difficult. In fact, I'm wearing my work outfit now. Yeah. I just I just came from work just yeah. to do this interview. So, <laughs> with everyone's schedule, it's all not really there. It's just like when can when, when can you when can damn yeah <laughs> yeah the directors don't get enough credit. They're the ones that have to bring it all together, and for some reason. I don't know if it's scheduling, I don't know if it's college, I don't know what it is exactly. It's difficult to do at this level. And it's, it's you know, kind of chaotic, but it's still a lot of fun. It's a great experience for me. And it's, well, right now it's, it's there, it's struggling, but. <laughs> it's not a lot of fun, it sucks. <laughs> you got 20 people running around. It's like, it's like trying to herd cats. So <laughs> act like the camera's not on it. Tell me what it's really like doing these rehearsals. Oh, okay, it, it's, it. <laughs> It sucks. <laughs> it honestly sucks. I hope they just laugh and that's all it is here is just have fun, laugh, be entertaining, enjoy a night out. I know that even if you're not familiar with superheroes, you're not familiar with Battlestar Galactica and Marvel superheroes, DC Comics, that kind of stuff, if you're not really familiar with it, You've still, through media and through movies and everything, you know who most of the people are. I'm hoping that the, the huge nerds are going to get the laughs that we're trying to uh, get out of them. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping there's a balance between the fans getting what they want and then people who just generally like superheroes or know nothing about them can get something out of it, whether they don't, uh, do or don't know the characters. Meanwhile, at the Hall of Justice, all of the heroes of the universe are gathered together for an Independence Day celebration, some as their alter egos. It's the one day of the year where even the villains take the day off from crime, allowing our heroes an opportunity to get together for a traditional outdoor barbecue. But as with many families, it's not without its drama. Thanks for inviting me to this barbecue. I'm sure it was a nice gesture. Thanks, Superman. I mean, Clark. Oh, it's our pleasure, Luke. <clears throat> I mean, we gotta like this every year to celebrate the 4th of July. Besides, you did destroy the Death Star. A nice burger courtesy of our beloved janitor Bob is the least we can do. Hey, I think he'd take you up on that. Hey, Bob, can I have a chili vegetarian burger? Clark says yours are the best. No chili. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was that, Bob? No chili soups. But Bob, you know that's my favorite. Yeah, I also know what it takes to clean the bathroom after you've eaten some of my chili. <laughs> so you're saying you really didn't make any chili, Bob? How can I put this? Um, no! Go home, Bob. You're fired. You know what? Fine! I didn't want to do this shit anyways. You bought me a damn apron that looks like Wonder Woman. You know what? you, Superman! You're gonna have to pay me twice to give me back, because what are you gonna do, have the Green Lantern come clean up this shit? I don't think so. I'll call <laughs> this. Wow, Clark. I got sure had a problem with you. Oh, don't worry do about him. Wanna do something to take your mind off it? 
I don't really want to do anything right now, Luke. I just want to get this over with. But if you're interested, you know, the Flash should have a game of Ultimate Frisbee out back, and he's been running circles around the thing. Or you could join the Ghost Rider with his flaming shots, which he loves. No, I'd rather stick to a real hero like you. That's fantastic, Luke, but it doesn't do much about our situation. Who's going to cook these burgers? Lord knows I don't do anything. Here, I'll cook for you. Fantastic. One side, kid. Wow, aren't you Han Solo? No! I mean, <clears throat> no. Indiana Jones at your service. Yep, no Nazis within 500 miles of this 4th of July. Fantastic, Indy. Thanks for coming. Now, if only something could be done about this weather. If maybe, I don't know, someone like, someone like Storm. Jeez, why do I always have to make it rain and sunshine and what do you want me to do? We want sunshine. All right, just this once. I don't think it's working. Thanks, Storm. Well, see you later. Have a good day, Storm. I hate to see her go, but I love to watch her leave. Hey, man. You look familiar. Have you ever been to Tatooine? Tatooine? What's it, kid? Come on. You don't remember the Millennium Falcon, Chewbacca? You're a spinning image of Han Solo. Sounds like a Swedish masseuse. <laughs> I'm telling you, Seven. I've had strange in space. <laughs> Boldly go where. Sorry. There's no way you could have had more women than me. Please, I'm James Bond. I don't even have to talk to women to get them to take the pants off for me. All I have to do is stand there. You look like me. Oh, come on, Bond. There's no way you could have had more women than me. Look at this body. That's what she why? Why? Because she's green? <laughs> Big deal. I've had pushing a lot. And I do mean a double entendre if you catch my grip. Here, here, let's sell this like men. Jones, which has had more women? Me or Mr. Yellow Shirt here? Which should say it all. Don't drag me into this. Are you sure it's chicks you've been with? <laughs> this guy? Oh, I'm Luke Skywalker. I spent myself some time in this face. No, seriously. Who is this guy? I thought I recognized you from a cantina I was in. My droid wandered into it. I'm not gay! Where's, where's Spock, Kirk? We... I... We had a falling out. I... I'm not gay! I'm gonna go get a drink. Do you want one? Mom. Of course, I'll take a dry martini. Shake it, not stir it. Right. Heidi ho oh! I promised I'd drop off my infamous deviled eggs before me and the rest of the important Avengers got back to promoting our new movie. It wouldn't be the 4th of July without them, Thor. Thanks for coming. I'll stop back for the fireworks if I can pry Cap away from hosting another patriotic extravaganza. Oh, also, whoever's Bentley is out front, Ghost Rider and Human Torch are doing flaming shots, and I think they've spilled some on the interior. Oh, not my Bentley. I Here he goes! I sold money for to keep her eyes on it. Pretty sure you are. Hey Punisher, how do you want this burger? Well, hey Punisher, you ever had a vegetarian burger? They're much better for you. Tastier too. And they don't cause the death of any living. <laughs> of any living. Yeah. Well done, sounds good. Yep. Well done, burger sounds perfect. Hope you enjoy it. What's his deal? 
The Punisher? <laughs> He's <f> crazy. <laughs> what? Nah, I'm just kidding with you, no. I never get a chance to swirl like that when I'm in the tights. You should have seen the look on your face, Luke. You actually ain't so bad. It's part of a group I play poker with on Thursdays. He's one tough son of a bitch to play, though. Is that... Is that Bruce Banner? What happened to you? Hulk, Legion, Shitter, Found, Toilet! Bruce, there's no toilet down that hall. Uh, you'll find it. Bruce, I'll be right back. Mother of God. Well, Bob is right. I'm going to have to call him and hire him back at double the salary. Hey, wasn't there another burger there? <laughs> Who is that? Probably a visit girl. Her and I used to have a thing. But, you know, she has a bit of a drinking problem. I heard that, Indy. <laughs> Touch me. Ah! Have we met? Name's Bond. James Bond, and I can teach you all kinds of invisible. Pig! No, no big deal. You know, I just had to go with the Batgirl and Bentley. I was gonna try it on the invisible Tish before going on to my real prize. And who would that be, Bond? James Bond! I cannot believe you! You and Batgirl? Seriously? Who's gonna raise this baby? <laughs> I knew she didn't use that golden lasso for good. Shut up, Punisher! <laughs> look, 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 Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman, I, uh, I, I, I thought it was Kirk. Kirk? Seriously? Am I green? Plus, everybody knows he's a straight as a circle. I'm not gay! <laughs> I have nothing to do with that, Shaft. Uh, yeah, but he changed. Now he's projectile vomiting everywhere. Everyone's running for cover. He's already taken out the 18th man, the Bat Cycle, and Kip. Mr. T is pissed. <laughs> <laughs> I never get a free day. Can you dig it? Who's this guy? <laughs> Shaft? Man. He's one bad motherfucker. Shut your mouth. I hate that song. Plus, you still owe me $20. He plays burger too? Can I come? Afraid not, kid. Pass your bedtime. Hey, you're shocked. Let me ask you a show. Who's had more women? Me or Cook? <laughs> well, that's easy. All me, baby. <laughs> Can you dig it? So, uh, kid, have you uh, tried the watermelon I brought? Oh. I thought it was you who brought that. Wait, hold up. Why well, got to be the brother that brought the watermelon? All the brothers bring the watermelon? <laughs> I bet you think Blade brought the fried chicken, don't you? <laughs> bring well, the relax, kid! It's not like he's pulling the ears off a gun dark or something. I knew it! You're Han Solo! Blade's been asking about you. Where have you been? Look, kid, I don't know who this Han Solo is, but it sure ain't me. Also, tell your sister I said hi. She's a pretty girl. <laughs> Come on, Kirk! I thought you said it was clobbering time! Uh, we're just playing a game of fun. Swift. I'm not gay, I swear. Are you saying I am? Pip squeak? Get your frisbee and give me a beer. Let's go play some cornhole. <laughs> I'm not gay. I'm a <laughs> She. Buffett the Vampire Slayer. Back in my day, girls like that were fierce. Well liked. I lurk off. 
Hello. <laughs> James Bond. James Bond. And before you go on patrol, I have all kinds of tricks for you on patrol. I know exactly who you are. Not sure I deserve that. Be happy it wasn't a snake to the face. You didn't even remember New Year's Eve party, did you? <laughs> Do you mean you peed on something to claim it as your own? No, 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 my money, little friend. I was uh, covering a zinc for Zorro you into know, the Batmobile. You know he's going to be pissy. He loves that car. Ah. Lieutenant Stella. You know he got Sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put a uniform. I like that. Name's Bond. James. The name's Lieutenant Starbucks. Frick, Captain Kirk didn't have such a lame call on line. I told you I wasn't gay! <laughs> <laughs> Wanna get out of here? <laughs> <laughs> well, we got that taken care of. Thank God Robin here showed up when he did. So, uh, how are those burgers coming? I hate all of you. What's with the getup, kid? <laughs> this? It's my costume. I'm Robin, the boy wonder. It's what I wear. <laughs> <laughs> We uh, forgot to tell you about this, Robin, but this was a no-formal event. No costumes. Uh, you didn't get the email we sent you? Prowler's in costume. Who? That guy. Who is Spider-Man spray, isn't he? Who is that? I didn't even notice him. No one ever does, kid. He's what you call a B-list. i never seen him without his costume. Come to think of it, neither have I. You know, Batman would make him take his mask off. That's right. Uh, where is Batman? He couldn't make it. His uh, parents are dead. Uh, Robin, that's that's really not something you should say at an event like this. A lot of us are orphans, man. <laughs> like Shaft and Zora. We're not orphans, yeah, we're man. orphans. <laughs> <laughs> Besides, Robin, you're an orphan too. Your parents are dead too. No, they're not. Yeah, they are. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it, Robin. He's probably just kidding with you. Right, Luke? You should call Batman and make sure. No, no! Don't don't do that. Why? You couldn't be that much trouble. I used to bullseye womp rats in my T16 back home. Because Batman is f***ing nuts. <laughs> Hello? Bruce? This is not a good time, dick. Yeah, am I here because my parents are dead or because you're busy? Robin, I'm busy right now handling the Riddler. It has nothing to do with your parents. Is this another Punisher joke? Because of it is. I told you I wouldn't be there until dark to see the fireworks. Daddy has to take care of business right now. I just... it... Is Indiana Jones there? No. I just... <laughs> put Superman on the phone. <laughs> Shit. Uh, hey Bruce. Uh, Look Clark, just watch my kid, okay? <laughs> Give him an ice cream or something. I'll be there as soon as I can. And don't let Punisher fuck with him. <laughs> right, right. That, that, that sounds like a good idea, Bruce. I completely agree. Look, Dick. Your old man wants you to have an ice cream cone and stay out of trouble. <laughs> He'd still make Prowler take his mask off. Yeah, you're right. Prowler! 
Take your mask off. Prowler, this is a party. Take your mask off. Oh, oh. Yes, <laughs> oh, there, man, you caught me. What did you? It was I who brought the matzo balls and the hummus. And now I know all of your secrets, so I'm believing now. Nazis. Oh, Cook. <laughs> it's you. I thought you were saying in tonight. <laughs> I mean, we got you now, you filthy villain. <laughs> so you think you'll stop me, huh? Just like you stopped me from crossing your best friend's heart. Oh, I knew it! <laughs> it was Fleetman, me and Chekhov were down from Yale. And we hit a time. Please go on. <laughs> After we hit that corn mark, we ended up in it's okay. Germany. People like to experiment. I'll handle this. <laughs> okay, okay. Yes, yes, that's the hell me! <laughs> <laughs> She's the only woman that's talking to me. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> Miss, Miss Ranger. Miss... What the... Well, that makes me a dirty old man now, doesn't it, Miss Ranger? Does that pique your interest? You seem well-versed in the ways of the world, Mr. Bond. When you say we get out of here, you help me with some extracurricular activities. Bye. Yes, yes, I would. And uh, let's take a ride on my Bentley and uh, go over this proposition. This looks like a job for Superman! <laughs> Clarissa Turner is a student here at the college and she came to me and she has some background in theater so I was immediately, immediately my radar snapped on and went, really? You know, because I'm like, at last, someone who gets it, you know, who's done theater before. And I said, what have you done? And she says, well, I did this, this, this. And I'm also a mime. And I was like, a mime, really? She says, oh yeah, I can do mime work. So I immediately, I immediately thought to myself, let's do a play about that guy in the form of a mime. The play is about the main character and his girlfriend. He's taking her out to dinner for their two year anniversary. We got a romantic evening planned. He's nervous, he wants everything to go right. And uh, he tries to get the maitre d' at the fancy restaurant on his side by just uh, giving a little bit of entertainment for uh, some atmosphere while he's getting his nerve up to propose. And the man's like, oh, you want me to bring the ring out in the wine glass? He's like, no, no, I just, I want you to bring like a violinist or something so to distract her while I get everything prepped. He doesn't specifically say just a violinist. He says, I want something entertaining that'll distract her and be romantic. The waiter interprets, interprets this as, send in the mimes, which is, <laughs> of course, the worst thing you could do in any situation because mimes are frightening. Yeah, so he's like, give, like, he's, give, He's like telling him to shoo and go away. 
while giving them money, which makes the mime come back. Because each time he does that, he gives the mime more money. You can't say why you really need the mime to go away, you know? It's, so it's really frustrating. So he's just trying to deal with that and, and get through the evening and make his special proposal still happen. The mime believes that he's getting paid, or she's getting paid to because she's doing good and he wants more and it gets more and more and by the end of it, you, he just hates mimes. He just hates mimes. Uh, it's just been hectic because everybody's got work and school, but uh, everybody's, you know, dedicated. That's been the big thing to be looking for, just making sure we can find people who are reliable enough and dedicated enough to come in and, you know, do the lines, do the work, and, and be there for read-throughs, rehearsals, things of that nature. I hope Giannis likes it. It's a short, simple play. There's nothing too complex in it. I try to avoid most of my usual nerdy references. I think the worst I did was my Archie and Veronica joke because no one ever talks about the Archie and Veronica comics, and they're so wonderful. Go buy them from Walmart. They're like <laughs> a dollar, and they're hilarious. <laughs> like, I don't really think it, it... I don't really think it has a message in it. It's just, you know a random time where a guy's trying to propose and he just can't do it because this mime is like screwing with him. <laughs> you know, I just want them to watch things unfold and as as a couple of surprises pop out here and there. He asks the maitre d' for something special to happen at dinner, uh, but he doesn't think it through of what it is he wanted to be special. And it's one of those instances where you say to yourself, whoops. Uh, before we order, uh, I want to ask a favor of you. Uh, step this out. Sure. Okay. Uh, look, here's here's the deal. Uh, Stepther and I have been dating for a few years now, and and tonight I wanted to. Well, oh, you're gonna propose? That's so sweet. Aw. Do you want me to bring out the ring and a glass of champagne when you signal me? Uh, no. Uh, oh, maybe you guys could bring out like a violinist or something that could, uh, you know play at our table, you know, the, like the romantic segue, you know, something to help set the mood? Hmm. People are so boring nowadays. I think I know exactly what to do for you, sir. Ah, oh, this is gonna be so great. Remember, don't let Steph know. Okay, no problem, sir. Alright. Well, thanks again for answering my question. We will certainly be trying the special of the night, since it's so highly recommended. Excellent, sir. And anything for you, ma'am? Whatever my Brucey is having, I'll have. Oh, babe, how many times do I have to ask you not to call me that? You know I don't like being called anything other than Bruce. Oh, like the other night when you told me to call you Super Smash Brother? <laughs> <laughs> Let's not talk about that, honey. <laughs> Still mad that I stomped your ass at Sonic Super Smash Brother? <laughs> Uh, whoa, what? Hey, what, what's going on here? We just want to eat. Who sent you here? Oh, they sent him out to deliver food. How cute. I think I like this place. <laughs> oh, really? Well, here, Mike. I'm going to give you this $1 bill, all right? Thanks for coming over, our, over to our table, but we want to eat now. Wow, I can't they hired a mime to deliver our food. I didn't, this, this, I didn't know this place hired mimes. Yeah, me neither. Looks like this night might be just full of surprises. Oh yeah? Well, depending on how our night goes, we might be in for a big surprise tonight. Oh yeah? Mm hmm Something I know you've wanted for a long time. You mean? That's right. I got the costumes in today. Tonight. Oh! We get to go to this year's Comic Con! Then we get to go dress as our favorite <laughs> comic characters, Archie and Veronica, baby! I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh, Bruce, looks like she caught me. Uh, yeah, how unexpected and clever. Look, here, Mike. I'm going to give you this $5 bill, all right? Now, please, th thanks for coming over to us again, but have a good night. Maybe visit that table next time. Bruce, that's <coughs> rude. She was just giving us a 
show and you seem mad. I'm sorry, babe. I, I just wanted tonight to be just be special, you know? Uh, what, what the hell is this? Okay, look, she, she, now she's just coming back for more money. Oh, Bruce, just play along. It's our three year anniversary. It should be fun. <laughs> 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 I mean, they're, thank God they're not doing like a rope gag or whatever. for not letting me die. Oh my. Ugh. Look. Here's $50, all right? Uh, I'm not trying to be a dick, but I would like a moment alone with my girl, if you don't mind. <laughs> Steph, all my life I dreamed that I'd find someone that I could really grow to care for. Someone I can have on my side every single day. And I think I found her. Now this isn't exactly how I wanted to do this, but... Now this isn't exactly how I wanted to do this, but... <laughs> you, you wanna... Do, do you mind? It's a good thing she didn't try to, like, take it or something. Alright. Stephanie and Gaga, will you marry me? Oh my gosh! Here, I thought you were just telling me to get another job again. Of course I'm going to get a really baby. It's the, the bygone classic tale of four college friends going on a summer road trip. So when nobody, when eventually it got canceled for the third time and no one wanted to direct it, uh, Scott Fogel uh, looked at me and said, hey, I'd like to give it a shot. So somehow the script ended up in his hands. I lucked out that uh, the people in, in my production, uh, made it sound classic, um, are have some talent um, and have done this before and have uh, it's been very easy they've um, th um, they've been able to take the script and put their own spin on it and make it work I worked with him a little bit in the past because he used to be in a class with me he I think should be able to come in and do a good job to help pull this one together. And it, it shows, you know, what can go wrong and what can go right in a road trip. And it's four very different characters. Four very different characters piled in the car, heading to California to party it up for a weekend or a week or two weeks. Or, and in the case of Mr. Brandon Rook, 17 months. That's what college has been for me. <laughs> no, it hasn't. I wish. Well, for now, I know that I am playing someone in the play that I kind of wrote. <laughs> it's like the antics that go on in a trip with four uh, teenagers graduating on the way to Florida. And I put my own spin on it. You know, I'm a product of the 80s and, you know, all those movies like, you know, Hard Bodies and One Crazy Summer and, you know, all that kind of stuff. It's a play about the college life and what appealed to me about it as a producer is the fact that these guys, the, the people going on this spring break, are in a car driving and it was something different you know that we haven't really attempted on stage you know with uh, people driving in a car and uh, I've seen it done before in one-act plays and I thought it'd be kind of fun you know give it a shot 
uh, I'm going to pull off driving on that stage because I have a little bit of experience with pantomiming. So it's basically the same concept. Uh, I just have to practice like there's a car in front of me. But now that we actually have a script and we all like it, because with the last meeting that everyone had, we kind of read through it. Oh, you know, this is really, really good. It's funny continuously and not just in parts. Um, it'll be interesting. So, you know, and then it's getting a script, and then I run down to the library. I didn't know you had to pay for copies. What the hell? So I go down there, and I, she's like, I'm like, what the hell's wrong with this thing? I'm standing down there for like five minutes, and I'm like, man, I gotta get this script back up there. I gotta let them know I'm gonna do it or not, what, you know? So the lady is like, the librarian's like, well, did you put your money in there? And I'm like, oh, money? Well, here, yeah, sure. So I pull out a 20, and she's like, no. Do you have any change? <laughs> I'm like, well, hell no, I don't. I don't just come to school with a pocket full of dimes. I'm sure it'll have its difficulties. It's a look at college life. It really is. I hope they, they, I hope they laugh. I hope they laugh. <laughs>
Stacy, you sick little perv. Hey, while well, you're back there, you want to grab me one too? Oh, I don't think so. Not in this car while I'm driving. There's open bottle rules, mister. Hey, did you want a magazine too? Yeah, yeah. I mean... Sure, I'll take... No, I wanted a beer, Stacy. a beer. God, you guys are assholes. <laughs> Hey, careful on these roads, man. It's pretty bad. Don't tell me how to drive. Stay back there. Oh. Oh. Great. I think we just blew a tire. And I don't have a spare. My mom's gonna freaking kill me. You mean to tell me that you don't have a tire, Chris? You, of all people. <laughs> Is that a fat joke? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would have had a spare if you wanted to pack all your shit back there. Given it's about as half as much as I thought you were going to pack, but that's still a lot. What did you even have to pack that was that important? Hey, I like my privacy, man. All you need to know is that most of that stuff I had left your mother begging for more. Hey, guys. We're sitting here in the middle of nowhere with nothing to do. Does anybody got a cell phone? Uh, I don't have mine. It, it, it's broken, man. <laughs> Shh. I spilled my phone water all over it. <laughs> <laughs> what about what? you? I had a cell phone, but somebody threw it out the window. Chillax, man. Besides, if I had to listen to that stupid ass Justin Bieber fever song one more time, I was going to take the wheel and drive us off a cliff, I swear to God. <laughs> Look, I let you finish, but Baby is the best pop song ever! <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't have a cell phone, you know, the government tracks that shit, yeah, but, uh, man. you know, Chris, I'd almost understand <laughs> pretending to be in a Bieber to pick up chicks, but... I don't even think that could help someone like you. And really, you'll never convince you'll never convince me that an American boy really enjoys listening to that shit day in and day out. Anyway, Stacy, you got a phone? I did. I forgot the charger, and it died back in Kentucky. Oh fuck a doodle doo! Oh shit, man. <laughs> Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, can I help you, officer? What are you guys doing out in the middle of nowhere? Dude, uh, dude, don't put this pig check the trunk. Yeah, why don't you pop the trunk? Oh shit, that was a lot louder than I thought it was. <laughs> There's no need to check back there. Oh really? What your little pal just said is plenty of reason enough for me to check. Pop the trunk, son. Relax, Chris. <laughs> Just open the trunk. As long as all this back there is unopened blues and has National Geographic, so we got nothing to worry about. Right, John? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. Just booze and magazines. And a little bit of reefer, oh, huh, shit. Guys? What? <laughs> Hell no. God damn it, John. <laughs> Fuck my life. All right, boys. One at a time. Out of the car. We just had to bring home a dirty basket. <laughs> All right. Uh, 
Uh, you guys notice that she just left without fixing the tire, right? Oh, fuck. What? Was she even an officer? She took his weed, too. Oh, hell no! It's my weed, man! And she grabbed my ass. <laughs> well, this is great. Well, boys and girls, this is gonna be a long trip. Might as well make the best of it. It's all about the classic guys trying to pick up women at a bar routine. And they're not really having any luck with it. Because they use uh, lame pickup lines that don't work and they allude to uh, references that nobody gets. They strike out. Well, they almost get one. Turns out she's a lesbian though. So... The only thing that makes this a unique setting now is the four guys aren't just guys, they're nerdy. And it kind of reminds me of the cast of The Big Bang Theory if they decided to all go out and, and pick up women. Uh, they're all, there's all the Star Trek and Star Wars and Battlestar Galactica and Doctor Who references in there. Yeah, but way more perverted. <laughs> so what is that? I didn't know Frenchie was that big of a pervert. I sit by her in class. I never knew she had these thoughts running through her head. <laughs> oh yeah, like some people think I'm more ladylike than I actually am. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> She's dirty. She's dirty. So wait a minute, like, to, tell me about that. What is that? What's the pervertedness to the play? All these jokes I couldn't even have come up with, like, j like being a man, like having that sense of like I'm a disgusting, you know, <laughs> perverted man type deal thing right. that women think every man has. But no, <laughs> Frenchie's got that, and she's disgusting in her thoughts. <laughs> I was drinking soda with some friends, and we were sitting around talking, and they're like, "Frenchie, you're the coolest guy I know," and I'm like. Because <laughs> of course it was the guy I was like totally in love with, and you're like, uh, yeah. <laughs> thanks. <Yeah. laughs> exactly. And that's always been my. There is a line like straight out of my life. You're not a girl, you know. Like, yeah. It's like bar talk. In like the Navy, <laughs> I don't know. She's. I hope the audience gets some of the references, but in a way, I hope that they don't, because um, watching these guys come together and make all these stupid references is in like inside jokes and stuff that normal society wouldn't get. But that's what it's like coming to this school and talking to people. They're like, "Oh, Doctor Who and Daleks and <laughs> yeah. and you know telephone booths or whatever." Tardis. Yeah, Tardis. Retardus, and it's like, and I'm like, that's what it's like. So if you guys are really uncomfortable watching this, just imagine having to associate with these people every day. So I'm one of the people that uh, one of the nerds comes up to and tries to get to go home with them, and I almost fall for it. I get really close because they hooked me with the Battlestar Galactica line. I got really close, and then um, the signature line comes after that. Whoever my date is tells the nerd, uh, these aren't the droids you're looking for, meaning I'm not interested at right, all. Right, yeah. Right, right. And Frenchie Schraden has really crafted an excellent script here, uh, but the only way you're really going to get it is if you're a sci-fi comic book geek. Are you kidding me? I am the opposite of this guy. Suave, debonair, charming. I hope that the jokes like the Star Wars references and the Doctor Who and the Battlestar Galactica stuff doesn't go completely over their heads. Yeah. Um, I think with the crowd we have at this school, it's not going to be too difficult for people to catch up on what we're trying to say. It's really hard to get everybody together, especially when you have such, like a big like ensemble cast, I guess it's called. Put together is a pretty cavalier term for what seems to me like read a script, show up opening night, and hope it all goes down smoothly. Uh huh. Yeah. And so uh, we did uh, some read-throughs here and there. I read the script. It's there's some cute moments in there, and I uh, 
And Frenchie's always fun to work with because she's goofy as shit. This was actually what got me into theater troupe. She asked me to be in her play. And I said, of course, yes, because she was cool and funny. And um, I, that's what got me into it. And that's this is probably the play I want to do the best at, actually. Even better in my play, just because this is what got me into theater. And I don't see a beer in my hand. What's <laughs> up, baby? We in Lord of the Rings? Let's enjoy my precious. Trying. Ew! Get away from me. There was a bigger letdown than Batman and Robin. <laughs> what did you expect going up to a girl like that? She looks like she has a time share on her brain, though. For boobs. For the wants of them. You're such a pig, you're never gonna get a woman. Yeah, well, your mom was so fat, her Patronus is a cake. <laughs> really? A Harry Potter reference? Very clever. At least I'm not a huge clot pole. What? A clot pole. It's Elizabethan slang for a stupid penis. Ooh, bird! <laughs> I don't know. I don't think I can do this. I'd rather go home and brew some potions on Pottermore. You'll be brewing more than potions if you go home and surf the history on your dad. <laughs> I told you it was a pop-up. I don't look at porn. <laughs> Who doesn't look at porn? Just pretend you're Captain Kirk. You can do this. I mean, I guess so. <laughs> Lots of tattoos. Goes by the name of Kane. Mm. Right. So I'll be going then. <laughs> it's official. All women want bastards. <laughs> what you, well, what did you expect going up to a girl like that? Well, I think it's probably a monster. I mean, couldn't you have picked somebody a little less macabre? She looks like her idea of a good time is just hanging out in the cemetery and listening to Marilyn Manson. Yeah. She looks like she'd be a little bit bigger on the inside, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I guess you're right. Damn, my man, you're up! Alright. Make it so, now one. Luke can survive Hoth by crawling inside a tauntaun. I can definitely do this. Alright, let's <laughs> spin you up. Whoa! Tauntaun's breath was definitely better than yours, haven't it? <laughs> just, just, just leave the tauntaun part out. Hey! According to the Scrolls of Pythia, I am the harbinger of orgasms. <laughs> what do you say we get out of here in frack? Uh, even if you were the last human on Caprica. <laughs> what do you mean? Ian, you watch BSG. We should drink a couple beers sometime and have a marathon. Sounds good. My name is Willow, by the way. Oh, really? Like Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yeah, I guess. Seriously? A 
gonna put this in a way you understand. I'll have to throw what you're looking for. And you, you always leave them on. What? I just thought we could be bros. No. <laughs> <laughs> So, how'd it go? I, uh, think they're here on a, uh, <coughs> a, a date. So, that's totally hot! You're an idiot. Listen, their eyes may say no, but their mouths say a whole breach is imminent. <laughs> I think in your case, it's safe to assume they're all lesbians. <laughs> Alright, well what about her? Go for it, she doesn't look like a friend of Ellen. Yeah. <laughs> what do you say you take the red pill, and I show you how far the rabbit hole goes? <laughs> I'm sorry, I was hitting on you by making a reference to your vagina and the Matrix simultaneously. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't work, did it? Not in the slightest. Okay then, I'm gonna disconnect. <laughs> so, uh, that didn't go as bad as I thought it would. Are you kidding me? That was the Death Star. <laughs> 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 She could have been mean about it. Let me not forget the uh, the blonde's eloquent response to you. Fuck off, nerd. Uh, 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 right, you know. Yeah. Well. Come on, buddy. You should go up to her. Come on. Come on, talk to her. I don't know them, and none of them are even wearing green. <laughs> You can do this. Come here, buddy. You think you're gonna... What? A giant couture? Two in the pink and one in the stink. <laughs> what is a prolapse? <laughs> Hi. Um... When I saw you across this crowded cantina, my crotch felt like it went through instant carbon freeze. <laughs> Get away from me before anyone thinks I'm with you. a little bit. <laughs> Call her a bitch. You're an imbecile. I thought you were going to be me beat the pussy by now. Come on and show me these lady skills you supposedly possess. All right. James Bond. All right, all right, fine, I will. I will. No woman can resist the charm of Jameson T. Jones. The problem was, Ian, you didn't dance properly. All right? Oh, by the way, it's James Kirk. Captain... More like Kirk Cameron. <laughs> hey, baby. You into magic? Because my wand is about to slither in. Um. <laughs> You're like the Justice League, and I'm like the Big League. Yeah, bro. Well, would take me back to the Justice League and I'll be done in a flash! Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> 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 
Originally, I thought a better name for this play, instead of Captain Cockblock, would be That Guy. Because everybody knows a that guy in some way, shape, or form. And that guy is never positive. <laughs> it's always, oh, that guy. <laughs> 